back to the Express at Highcroft Manor in Vancouver for Ain't She Sweet All That Jazz. It's a vintage fashion show and fundraiser for the Canadian Diabetes Association. Now on today's show, from food to fashion, we're taking a look at the styles from across the pond. And really, there's nothing more British than the classic topper. To Matt Clayton, the hat makes the man. I always say to people, once you start collecting hats, you don't stop. You can always uh, mix it up, but you always start planning outfits to go towards the hat. As a shopkeep here at Gorin Brothers Hat Shop, Matt's surrounded by high-end headpieces of every style. But at the moment, his favorite hats are British in origin, like the iconic top hat. When I think of a top hat, I'm thinking class all the way. When I, the first image that pops in my head is, you know, a guy wearing a really nice suit, walking with a cane and a top hat with a big handlebar mustache. Also known as a cylinder hat, chimney pot hat and stovepipe hat, the topper is a British classic. Created in London in the mid-1700s, this highest of hats was worn by everyone from royalty to the working class. The first known report of the top hat was in 1747 where it was depicted in an etching of Lord Mayor of London. Uh, but it wasn't until the 19th century that it, you know, it turned from a fashion into a sign of respectability. Today, the top hat still adds a touch of class whether you go high or low. It's also a great conversation starter at those upcoming Christmas parties. Another English classic, the bowler. A hat that looks, you guessed it, like a bowl. A lot of the guys that were riding on horseback or riding the horse carriages were having their top hats either knocked off by branches or by the wind and getting damaged. So they devised the bowler because it was a bit lower profile. Charlie Chaplin, Winston Churchill, they donned bowlers too because back then the hat was as stylish as it was protective. The original bowlers were actually hard enough for you to stand on, so they're almost like a helmet. Along with the very British pork pie hat, which looks like an upside down pork pie, and these 14th century flat caps made popular by English farmers, Gorham Brothers has a hat for everyone. The problem is choosing the right one. But Matt says it's easy if you trust your gut and not your head. The thing about hats is it's got to feel right. If it doesn't feel right, chances are you're not going to wear it. And if you're wearing an old-fashioned British hat, remember to greet others with a tip. Because looking classy means staying classy. I'm Tim Chung in Vancouver for The Express. Legend has it that the first time English haberdasher John Hetherington wore the top hat, it caused a riot. Seriously, apparently women fainted, children screamed, and dogs barked. You can wiki it. Kind of a crazy story, but less so is how much the Brits love their tea. Apparently, 2.5 kilos per year per person is consumed. Now, Squamish resident Matthew Lucas knows that devotion to tea so much that he's opened up his own shop. Hey there. Hi. How are you doing today? So you want green tea. green tea? The British Industrial Revolution was basically happened because of tea. Because people could have tea in the day, they would get more substance in them, and they could work longer hours, and they could like, produce more. And that was basically um, through the help of tea. A few dried leaves, as harmless in appearance as a kitten. But these clippings have brewed a designated meal all into itself. They also create the second most consumed beverage in the world, second only to water. And these delicate stems have even sparked revolutions and wars. Huge like events in human history have been sort of are surrounded by tea. You know, like the American Revolution was kind of like what sparked it was like the overtaxation of tea. The Boston Tea Party was because people were fed up with paying too much money for their teas. So that is going to be good. With British parents and grandparents, it's not surprising that Matthew Lucas was steeped in tea culture, despite growing up in Canada's Great White North. The Yukon native then turned his teapot passion into a full-time business when he opened Lucas Teas in Squamish only two months ago. We have a guy in Assam that owns a, a tea garden that uh, sends me a lot of those teas and then because teas come from basically all over the world. 
green, white, yellow, oolong, black, post-fermented, and herbal teas, stored in 90 glass jars, come from as far as India, Japan, and China, as well as Egypt, South Africa, and South America. Lucas pulls a classic sort of tea born from an ancient uh, trading route. This is like the tea that traveled the 16-month Silk Road. And what's really cool about it is it's like one of the more acquired taste teas. It smells really smoky. Yeah, totally. This is Lapsong Souchon. And what's really cool about it is that um, it, the flavor in it. So essentially what happened is a big battle happened in the Fujian region and they didn't have enough time to um, like properly treat their tea, so they quickly dried it under um, pine needles under the tea. Now it's become like this sort of world famous tea. Lucas Teas will take care of all your teapot and cozy needs, including infusers. This is probably the most popular, but it's not necessarily the strongest choice. When choosing a diffuser, whether it's gonna be for a cup of tea or a pot, you wanna make sure that your leaves have lots of room to breathe. Tea bags can have the opposite effect. One of the other things is that tea bags have a tendency to restrict, um, well, the, they don't allow the tea to sort of open up and bloom and get that full flavor, and that's what the beauty part of like a nice loose leaf tea is. Hand-picked, hand-crafted, leaves are harvested whole rather than machine processed, and giving these leaves the white glove treatment improves the flavor even more. All teas are a little bit different. The water temperature needs to be a little bit different for individual teas. So green teas are quite delicate, so the water temperature shouldn't be like as hot. And then you can have the full boiling water on the black teas. And then through that, you also have your time, which is the amount of steeping each tea has. Like there's some teas that are actually only steeped for 30 seconds. And it's just really subtle teas. Lucas doesn't take his tea drinking too seriously. He'll even take a spot of milk and sugar, as the British do, despite knowing the history behind the tradition. When they first got tea to England back in the day, they had to travel from what, all the way from China or India, all around, and it would be, by that time, it would be like moldy, so they put milk and they'd put their two sugars in there and they'd have their tea. The purpose behind the tradition is now redundant, but the story lives on, giving tea drinkers a greater appreciation for their loose leaf sipping experience. From Squamish, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for The Express. Matthew is currently studying to become a tea sommelier. Currently there are only seven tea sommeliers in all of Canada and Vancouver Community College was the first college to offer courses in Western Canada on the program. Everything is from the UK. After the break, New West one-stop shop for all things British. I've never actually been to England but I feel like I'm in England when I come here. Oh, I have to make Yorkshires every day and I used to only make them on Saturdays and Sundays. The surprising story of the Yorkshire Pudding Ladies. The Express, we are your local voice. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by... Hairstyling and color services for Shaw TV, provided by The Lounge Hair Studio, loungehairstudio.com. to the Express at Highcroft Manor in Vancouver for Ain't She Sweet All That Jazz. This is a fundraiser for the Canadian Diabetes Association and a pretty fun one. The ladies and gents like me got to get all dressed up in our Sunday best. There's been some jazz music, a vintage fashion show, and a chance to enjoy some treats and goodies. And if you think that's a lot, wait till you see this next story. A New West business that offers tea, lunch, British groceries, and antiques. Yeah, all of that together. Whether you're an Anglophile, an expat, or even maybe just a fan of British chocolate, Sherlock's or the British store in New Westminster can give you almost anything you'll need from the Commonwealth, even a nice cup of tea. And everything is from the UK. Uh, we've got grocery sweets, we have the soccer paraphernalia merchandise, and then we have the Union Jack items, giftware, and then we also bring in the, uh, or we make on the premises, our own sausages, bacon, um, pies, Last March, we opened up the tea room area um, and we do a soup and sandwich on a regular basis um, and sell the pies and everything baked that morning. 
They're nice people, and it's a good place, and the food's tasty. I'm having the steak and kidney pie and the clam chowder, which is possibly the best clam chowder this side of Boston. Oddly, Sherlock started off as a place for antiques and collectibles. Andy still rents out shelves to local sellers, but his main focus is on the treats and the sweets of the empire. I would say it's the sweets and the, and the chocolate, because the, the chocolate itself is very different to North American chocolate. It is made with milk, where a lot of the chocolate in North America is made with powdered milk. So that gives it that creamier fa flavor, as well as the cocoa butter itself. In addition to the storefront, the collectibles, the tea room, and of course the butcher upstairs, Sherlock's acts as a wholesaler for British products all around Canada. And as you might guess, with the recent royal wedding, anything from the UK is highly sought after. And now I, I've just talked to my supplier and they've got now the after wedding pictures. So now they're, they're running along with the, these lines of them kissing on the balcony or the carriage or coming through the church. So there's that aspect coming on. So I don't think it's going to end. I've, I've never actually been to England, but I feel like I'm in England when I come here. It's a, it's a good place to discover. I'm Aaron Shaw in New Westminster for The Express. Sherlock's in New Westminster is so popular that they now have a thriving online business where you can order anything from spices to jam, all with an ode to the UK. The website is BritMarket.com. You're watching our Express special on all things British, and we have another success story up next as we find out how Yorkshire puddings put one Coquitlam butcher shop on the map. Here at the British butcher shop, they sell delicious meats. But that's not the reason people have been coming in lately. I've never seen such gigantic Yorkshire puddings in my whole life. The Yorkshire puddings have put us on the map. That's right, Yorkshire puddings. They're made by Debbie Barrow. I am the butcher, the baker, and the Yorkshire pudding maker. <laughs> and they're very, very good. I've had people go out to their car and basically snarf them down <laughs> and come back in and buy more. On an average, I do probably about between 90 and 120 Yorkshires a day. Debbie has a couple of tricks. For the first 15 minutes, they start at 400. The buzzer will go off, then I take them, turn them, turn it down to 375. But there is no secret recipe. Well, the secret of it, of it is that I do it by feel, other than, rather than just putting it in a box or just following a recipe. The Yorkshire puddings were living in obscurity until a Vancouver Sun reporter discovered them. So this is the newspaper article that kind of changed everything. What happened once this uh, hit the newsstands? Well, it hit on a Wednesday morning, and we had people lining up at 9.30 in the morning, waiting for Yorkshires, and I hadn't even started them yet. And I think by about 10 after 10, we were sold out. That one week alone, I probably baked maybe about five or 600 Yorkshires. We had people driving from Delta, Surrey, Richmond, from Hope, Mission, and the hunger for Yorkshire puddings is showing no sign of slowing down. We actually had to hire somebody that's, she's here for on her fourth day. On a regular basis now, I have to make Yorkshires every day and I used to only make them on Saturdays and Sundays. It's, it's been an exciting roller coaster. Now I'm no food writer, but in my opinion, these Yorkshire puddings are fit for a queen. I'm Bianca Saltrebeck in Coquitlam for The Express. So good. The website is thebritishbutchershop.com. Now, Yorkshire pudding was invented in Yorkshire, England, no surprise, but it was originally called the dripping pudding, and then it was reinvented and renamed in 1747. You're watching The Express, and we've got your spotlight on some events that are a little more current. The 15th annual Eastside Culture Crawl is a free three-day visual arts phenomenon. The event involves more than 10,000 people visiting artists in their studios in East Vancouver. Get a head start on your holiday wish list. Lee Square Community Arts Village 4th Annual Winter Artisans Fair returns to offer affordable quality art, fine crafts, and edibles. Shop Fort Langley's Bloom Holiday Market for one-of-a-kind handmade gifts from more than 40 independent artists, designers, and crafters from around BC. And that's it for today's Express from Highcroft Manor in Vancouver for the Ain't She Sweet All That Jazz fundraiser for the Canadian Diabetes Association. Pip, pip, my friends. Thanks for watching the Express, only on Shaw TV.